Hey guys, my name is Tom, and today I'm going to show you how to set up your Shure SM7B in OBS to get the best possible sound quality out of it. This is a, a professional microphone. It's super popular with streamers, but the big issue that people have with it is out of the box, it doesn't really sound like people are used to hearing on a stream. And that's because a professional microphone has a very flat frequency response, and it requires a little bit of processing to get the most out of it. it it's not like a cheap, uh, you know, $100 or $200 condenser mic that out of the box sounds like crisp and everything. That's because of the way they build those. They want people to, you know, basically not have to do much to them. But you got this nice mic. Let's work on setting it up. If you're an audio nerd like I am, check out the Shure SM7B user guide on their website. It's got all kinds of information on how to place the mic, the different switches and windscreens, how to flip the mic upside down for use on a stand, the stand adapter. Like It's just great. I love reading this stuff. Some people don't like it. Most important thing is these switches on the bottom. If you flip the mic upside down, there's two switches. Get like If you've got long fingernails or a little screwdriver, pop those switches both in the up position. That's going to keep the low frequencies flat and engage the presence boost which is gonna help a little bit. But as you can see from this, it's not much of a presence boost. It's like maybe four dB, five dB, and it's in the upper mids. It's not even up here where that real crisp, like high frequency, high quality sound is. So we're gonna to have to help it out a little bit. To do that, check out this free plugin. It costs you zero bucks. I get nothing from sharing this with you guys. I'm just sharing it because it's, it's a great free plugin. Uh, it's Tokyo Don TDR Nova. So download this VST, install it on your machine because we are going to use this to help out our mic. So now that you've got your mic plugged in, let's work on setting the input levels. What I'm going to do, I've got filters on here, but I'm going to take them off and you'll hear my voice sounds different now. This is the raw output from the microphone. So just speak at your normal volume level. Uh, pretend you're playing a game, you know, drop in some sick commentary that people are going to love or hate. Make sure that you set the peaks of your voice to where right here between minus 30 and minus 20, you can see the peaks are hidden right there. That's perfect. If they're not hitting there, turn the input gain up. If they're way up here because you're a screamer, turn them down. If you have some kind of uh, inline booster uh, amplifier, you know, like a, a fed head or a cloud lifter, go ahead and use it. I've got a Focusrite Scarlight interface. It's got the, uh, sorry, Scar Scarlight, Focusrite Scarlight interface. It has plenty of gain for this mic. This is a really hungry mic. So don't be surprised if your input gain is really high, which even with a, uh, a booster is going to induce some noise into the signal. I've tested these boosters. They all add noise to the signal. So I just run it straight to my interface. It's simpler, cleaner, less things to go wrong that way. So after you have that set up, what we're going to do is add some filters. So filters, how do you add them? What you do is you click the gear on mic and then go to filters. It's very simple. The filters we're going to use is TDR Nova. That's a VST 2.x plugin. So to add that, just hit the plus, click VST 2.x plugin. We're going to add noise suppression, a compressor, and a limiter. So just so you can hear what these are doing, I'll engage these. Okay, so now you can hear this is the filtered audio um, from this microphone. As far as settings and how to set this up, after you add these, uh, just add them one at a time. So let's start with the VST 2.x plugin. Click this menu, click TDR Nova. If, if you don't see it there, you haven't installed it. So download it and install it. Then click Open Plugin Interface. That's going to bring up this guy. I've got a preset. I'm going to try to copy and paste it to the, the description of the video. If that doesn't work, I'll post a link or something like that. But you can start with the, uh, the default. You can start with any of these. The important things to set up are what I have on this EQ. The main problem with this mic is that out of the box, it sounds dull, muffled, woolly, whatever adjective you use, the high frequencies just aren't there, especially if you have kind of a darker voice to begin with. So 
what we're going to do is add a dynamic high shelf. We're not just cranking up the high frequencies. You can see here when I do an S, S sound, that S is reduced because I have the dynamics engaged on the channel. So as far as settings, copy and paste this preset. To do that, what you have to do is just like grab the text from the video description, uh, Command C on Mac, or I think uh, you Windows people probably Control V, Control C. Then just open this plugin window and just paste it. So I'm going to do Command V and see it says you're about to create a new global preset. You can name it whatever you want. I've got mine named SM7B. I'm going to click cancel because I've already got this preset saved, but it's it's super cool. You just paste the text into the plugin window. I think that's really awesome. So if you want to set this up from scratch yourself, do it. You can also grab this uh, preset and paste it in here and then tweak it to your voice. The important thing is with the monitor on, you can hear kind of what it's doing. You can bypass it if you want to hear the difference with that off and then back on. So this high shelf, I've got the Q set really low frequency. It's boosting everything over like 2K. And then I've got the threshold set to where it's kicking in on those sibilant sounds. I can lower this more and get more of a, a de -er type effect. The reason we want this to kick down a little bit on the S's and F's is because I really only want this boosting the high frequencies on the non sibilant sounds. So anything that's not an S or an F or SH sound, I want it to crispify that, but then keep it from being like an ice pick hitting your ear where it's just way too boosted. So that is the beauty of a dynamic EQ is it can boost and it can also lower based on the threshold you have set. And you can see the ratio I've got set really low. Uh, I do have a low pass enabled. This is just set at 13K. There's not too much up there for most voices. And what there is a lot of up there is like Wi-Fi 2.4G. Uh, I had one place I had a studio at that had a cell phone tower outside. I'd get all kinds of nasties up there. So this will take away some of those. Um, I forget what they're called. Is it infrasonic? But it's the super high frequency stuff. And then down here, I have a high pass filter to get rid of rumble. So if there's traffic outside or if I have my boom arm on a desk, it's going to get rid of a lot of that rumbly stuff. Mine is set down at 74 hertz because I have a lower voice. You can tweak this if you're a squeaker, bring it up here. Uh, if you're Barry White, you might want to open it up down to like 50 hertz. But high pass, low pass is just kind of getting rid of the yuck. And then I have a little tiny bit of mid-range compression. It's really not doing much. Mostly this is for the, the high frequency boost. So that's all set up. We got that done. That's going to give me a nice crisp uh, overall sound, but it's not going to do some other stuff that I need. So let me go to the next filter, noise suppression. Use RN noise. It's not going to cut out as much noise but the quality is way better than speaks. So you don't have to get rid of all the noise. Like you don't have to throw a gate on your voice. Uh, you just need to clean it up enough to where whatever other sound you have going on behind you, you know, you can hear that clearly without like traffic or a fan or whatever is in your room. My room's really quiet, so it doesn't really need this, but it just helps clean up, especially since you're boosting these high frequencies it's going to get rid of some of the hiss that's induced when you do that. So noise suppression is next. Next, I've got a compressor. If you have set your peaks between minus 30 and minus 20, you wanna set your threshold right in the middle there, minus 25, ratio at about three. Attack and release can stay there. Output gain is what is boosting this up from the peak range of minus 30 to minus 20 up to between minus 20 and minus 10. So this compressor is is taking the this huge dynamic range of me, you know, screaming and whispering and and laughing and farting and all that stuff and just compressing it down to a much tighter signal so that the lows aren't as quiet and the highs the high volumes aren't as high. But it's still not going to catch the really high peaks like if I yelled, which is what the limiter is for. The limiter is set to where no sound is going to go over minus six. I could scream. I could have a nuclear bomb go off outside. 
it's never going to go over minus six. So this is like the safety on a weapon. At the very end, this limiter is just catching anything and saying, nope, you shall not pass. You're not going past minus six. So those are the filters I'm using. Again, the order is TDR Nova for dynamic EQ, then noise suppression, then compressor, then limiter. I've seen some people do the noise suppression first. The reason I don't like doing that is because since this EQ is getting rid of the rumble and the super high frequency noise, just by filtering it out, that makes it to where the noise suppression doesn't have to work on as much broad band noise. It's, it's like, especially the rumble, uh, low frequency stuff. I don't want it to have to deal with that because I don't want that on my stream. So the EQ cleans up the signal for the noise suppression. You can add a gate if you want, noise gate. Uh, I don't like the sound of gates because they're imperfect. They'll cut off like the beginning and end of your words and they just sound kind of robotic. So I tend to not use gates, but the noise suppression, definitely go for that. And your mic, your SM7B should, if you use these settings, sound pretty good. Make sure you check your levels after you're done with all this. You can go ahead and go to advanced audio properties if it sounds good to you. Turn monitor back off. Um, and, and feel free, like tweak these settings to suit your voice. Your voice isn't going to be the same as mine. You might have like higher voice, lower voice, like it, it's like a fingerprint. Your voice is like a fingerprint. So make sure to tweak the settings to really suit your voice. And then I suggest after you turn monitor off, do a recording in OBS, record the file, listen back to it on headphones, listen back to it on studio speakers, listen back to it on your phone if you can, like really put it through a comprehensive listening test because after you have this set up, you shouldn't have to mess with it anymore unless your voice changes, which could happen. So the other thing I'll say is if you're streaming game audio, I have another video on setting up this uh, similar settings, but with a sidechain compressor to duck the game audio when you speak. So check that out if you want. Uh, and again, if you want this preset for um, the Tokyo Don TDR Nova, copy and paste it from the video description, or if I can't fit it, I'll put a link. And it should help you guys get started with this awesome microphone that you got. So don't sell the mic. It's a good mic. Just tweak the settings to get the most out of it. See you guys next time.